What this researcher did is what most researchers would never do. Her colleagues called her crazy until they saw the results. They are now considering doing the same. If you are a university professor, you live in a publisher parish world. You either publish or you never get tenure or a promotion. But to publish, you need to do research. And to do research, you need data. Lots of good data. So professors spend most of their time collecting data. All those lab experiments, surveys, and expert interviews take a lot of time and money. Your data largely determines if you publish or if you perish. So the researchers never share their data. Why would you? If they are so important, right? Wrong. This is Dr. Giffishstein. She just published her dissertation data on wikidemics.org for anyone to see and download. Her colleagues think she's crazy. She openly shared her most valued possession, her data. What a waste. Or is it? Dr. Giffishstein published two papers based on that database, but she knew there were more good stories in it. She just ran out of ideas. She figured if she publishes the data, at the very least she'll get a line on her CV. A data publication is still a publication. After she published her data, she was first receiving only thank you notes from other researchers who found her data to be interesting. Then one day, she got an email from Dr. Jones. Dr. Jones had a brilliant idea for a study that could use Dr. Gipfelstein's data. What a great idea! How didn't she think about it herself? Since Dr. Gipfelstein knows a lot about her data, Dr. Jones wants her to co-author the paper. She agrees, and they publish the study in a leading journal. They liked working together so much, they are now working on a new paper that has nothing to do with the original data set. Then shortly after, Dr. Gipperstein gets an email from Dr. Chan. Dr. Chan collected similar data and wants to do a replication study. However, Dr. Chan feels he could write a better paper if he teamed up with Dr. Gipperstein, who by now is a renowned authority on the topic. Dr. Gipperstein agrees, and they conduct a good replication study that discovers some new results that couldn't be found based on Dr. Gipperstein's data alone. Then a bit later, Dr. Suzuki sees Dr. Gipfelstein's data on wikidemics.org. He downloads the data set and uses it as an example in his statistics course. One of his students discovers an anomaly in the data set. So Dr. Suzuki leaves a comment on the Wikidemics discussion board. Dr. Gipfelstein reads the comment, takes a closer look, and oh my, this is really interesting. It's not an anomaly. It's a really interesting case. She studies it some more and publishes a really good paper. So publishing that old data set on wikidemics.org was unconventional, but it wasn't such a bad idea after all. Dr. Gipfelstein not only added a data publication to her CV, but also three brand new papers she would have never wrote had she not published a data set. And she met good colleagues and co-authors in the process. Publishing that data set on wikidemics.org wasn't a waste after all, was it? Dr. Gipfelstein's colleagues see the benefits now, and are going through their files looking for data they can publish on wikidemics.org. Go to wikidemics.org to learn why and how you can also publish your research ideas, teaching tools, and research challenges.